What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to dive into a subject that I'll tell you what, growing up I had to learn by trial and error and that is how to correctly pick the right hook for the application that you're fishing. And what I mean by that is a lot of times I would say Texas rigging in general um, and we're going to go with the Texas rigging style, side of this because we can go on and on for days. But the key with that is there's so many different profiles out there, you know, of, of, you know, different kinds of baits. And I have a mainstay of particular hooks that I use. All of those are VMC hooks. Most of them are what I have right here. And we're going to dive into exactly that right now. So let's go into it now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so basically when you think about like hooks in, in, a, in a hole, there's really like four different kinds of like Texas rigging style hooks. Um, you know, I'm gonna go through them like you have like three or four. You have basically three is what I use. Um, you have a traditional like EWG, like a wide gap hook, like this one right here. You have uh, a straight shank where your actual shank is like a straight. That's what be a straight shank has a little bit wider gap. This is like a heavy cover, um, a heavy cover flipping hook, three aught. And then you have your traditional worm hook. Um, and that's, this is actually a light wire. Now there's different gauges of wires and, and that's all dependent on what, you know, what kind of cover you're fishing or how big the fish are, or if you're casting it, flipping it all, so on and so forth. So it can go into a lot of different things. But when I go to actually selecting a hook, I look at a couple different things. First thing I'm looking at is the particular bait I'm throwing. So say if I'm throwing this bandito bug um, and I'm flipping a lot of wood. Personally, for me, one of my favorite hooks to flip with a bandito bug is a straight shank hook, okay? So when I'm flipping it, it definitely seems to work well for me. Now, the way I Texas rig this particular hook, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it, um, which some of you might know this, some of you might not. Um, the thing is, I go in about a quarter of an inch, like that right there, quarter of an inch. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna spin around. Now, obviously I have normally a weight attached to this. You can fish a bandito bug weightless and I've caught some fish doing that. But most of the time I'm, I'm gonna have a weight associated to the hook. Bring this guy down below the hook keeper, the bait keeper. And now the big thing with a straight shank hook is I'm, it's the angle of which that hook is pointing is the key. So I'm gonna dig him down in there a little bit, scrunch him up. So I want to rig him straight. I'm going to poke him through just like that. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll poke him through and then I'll actually bring him back into the bait. Back into the bait where I don't even, I can barely feel the hook. The key is, is barely being able to feel a little bit of that hook. Now that is flipping wood cover for the most part. That is why I am going to, you know, I can barely feel the hook. It's not super heavy cover. Now this, that being said, I've noticed at times, like say I'm flipping down in Florida, flipping reeds. I sometimes, I will not, when I'm flipping reeds, I, a lot of times I will not use a straight shank hook. You know why is, is the big key is that hook point will pop out a lot easier and hook those reeds too easy. So that is when I will actually take that particular hook, not tie it on, and I'll throw a, a actual wide gap hook. And when I rig a wide gap hook up, it's all dependent on same sort of deal. Let me go down about a quarter inch. So same thing I'm gonna do right here with a wide gap hook. I'm gonna actually go back into the plastic, turn around, I have all this tied on prior to. Now I have it sort of set up there. Now the difference is because of the angle of that point, it's, it's completely different. Now, if I can get away with a straight shank hook on a bandito bug, that's what I'm gonna do. But right here with a wide gap, I can actually get this to go through that bait and I'm gonna bring it all the way through like I have right here. And then I'm gonna do what you call exposing, And that is bringing that soft plastic, and I'll try to get close here and see if Brody can get, can get in there. It's okay. So I'm gonna actually bring that soft plastic forward, 
forward and then actually cover up that hook point. See if you can see how that is right there. So the key is with this, and I can tuck it in there hard, you know, a little bit more um, if I have to, but if I'm super heavy cover, then I, I'll go way further up into that hook, in the, into the actual soft plastic to where I'm really burying it in there. And the key with that is, um, for me, it, it, I don't get hung up as much in vegetation like that. So that is the way I rig a, a creature bait with, um, I always expose it with that wide gap hook. Now, a traditional worm hook style, um, and, and the big key with like when you pick the hook, it's all dependent on the profile of the plastic. You know, if you're looking at the Bandito bug, it's pretty thin. I could throw a, a wide gap hook, or I could throw like a worm hook in this, but you gotta think, okay, so the larger profile, the, the bait, okay, let me grab, hold up. Can you show the hook, put it on your hand. Put it's hard to see okay, yeah, yeah. hold it up like this, because your okay. shirt's black. Yep. So like, if I look at what I, like, all right, so if you look at this hook, the hook point, Sorry, I'm gonna try to like see if you guys can see it. You can see like that, that hook point or that hook does not have a big gap. Does not have a real big gap on it. Where if I take, you know, this five aught wide gap hook, you can see it giant, big gap. And that all depends on, okay, like imagine this. So if I have this big saw plastic, this is like the new Gugan Bates toad. Well, if I rig this up and I Texas rig this thing up with a worm hook, like, this right here is not gonna look like, like I mean, that's it's way bigger. The actual bait is way bigger than the gap that of the hook right here that I would be selecting. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna have a larger gap in your hook selection than the actual bait that you're choosing, like this right here. So if I was gonna throw this toad right here and I wanted to even Texas rig it, say I wanted to flip it, which you can definitely do that. It's not like it's, you can't. I'm going to select a hook that has a big enough wide gap. I'll try to get into where you guys can see that. A big enough wide gap where you could see like right there, he's good to go. Now, that's a huge deal. I see people go too small of a hook for the particular soft plastic that they're trying to rig. And if you're Texas rigging it, like I took, you know, like that's, that's a big deal. Like, like right here, now I'm good to go. I can sort of text expose it like I do most of the time with this wide gap hook. You can sort of see, it's ready to roll. Heck yeah, and we're good to go. Now, the thing is, if the larger the hook that you select, if there's, like this one has a lot of gap, I might go down to a four eye. This one actually has like a lot of gap in it. You can see below that bait. I might actually go to a four eye. Because if I'm getting, if, I, if this bait's like going upside down or something, which a lot of times I'll actually use like a belly weighted hook for this particular bait, I'll actually go to a four out because it'll catch a lot more grass sometimes and going over that stuff. So anyway, the key is when you're selecting those hooks, it all depends on the soft plastic. Now we're gonna go into the worm hook. The reason why it's a worm hook and the reason why I throw a worm hook, um, is still the angle, you know? Like if I'm fishing, say I'm fishing brush or like offshore, um, brush. So like, I'm gonna actually get in here and grab one of these hooks. Let me see, I'm gonna get a little bit thicker wire hook. Here's the difference. This is like a thicker wire hook. This is a thin wire hook, okay? So if I'm making shorter casts with a worm um, and heavier cover, I'm gonna pick the larger gauge wire hook. And if I'm using a, if I'm fishing, making longer cast, even if I'm fishing like brush, I'm actually going to pick the lighter wire hook. And the reason for this is it takes less uh, less force to have this hook go through your skin or go through the bass's mouth than obviously it would this hook because of the gauge of the wire. So that is why understanding the gauge, what gauge of wire, I'm not going to throw this hook right here on a spinning rod. This is not, it's just too thick of a wire for a spinning rod, I'm gonna throw this on a casting rod, I'm gonna throw this on probably a flipping stick or something with a heavier action. Um, and I probably won't throw this hook on anything other than something with a heavier action, with, you know, because I, or if I'm throwing braid. You could throw braid with like a seven foot, you could throw like a medium heavy action rod um, with this hook with braid because you have no stretch. There has to be some point where that hook's gonna really be able to 
drive through and, and actually get that fish in. Um, so that's why one thing, paying attention to the gauge of the wire that you are using is very, very important. So rigging up, I'm gonna rig up uh, uh, this worm right here. Actually, I'll probably use the thick wire hook so you guys can see it a little bit better because it is a little bit larger. Same thing, go in. And, and, and one thing you're gonna wanna try to do is always try to pay attention to where to where you don't have your bait kinked. I don't like to, I don't wanna kink, kink the bait too much. And what I mean by that is I wanna rig it straight as, as possible. So I'm gonna do the same thing, turn him around, and then go through that soft plastic. And what I do here, again, again, I'm trying to get this bait as straight as possible. So I'll pop him out, pop that hook point out like that. And what I do is I actually just make, sorry. And what I do is I'm actually just popping that hook point out right there so it makes it easy when I set the hook that there's a little bit of that, that, that plastic that's actually torn. And it's actually torn up enough where then I'll go back into the bait and then I'll actually bring it up into a different direction. So there you have it. Now it's straight, you have a Texas rig, you know, worm. Now that's a worm hook. Now it's a little bit big for that. I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't probably throw a slim shake with that big of a hook. But you could, you theoretically could. So diving into those hooks, hopefully you guys learned a little bit. I have, you know, three, those are the main three. I said four, those are the main three that I'm going to throw. A worm hook, a straight shank hook, and you know, a wide gap hook or EWG. That's what I have most in my boxes. Hopefully this video helped, it, helped you out. If you learned something, do us a favor, go up there to the top click the like button. We really appreciate the thumbs up. It makes us feel like, hey, we're, we're doing a good job. Um, also, if you have a video suggestion that you really wanna see on the channel, drop a comment below. Let me know your favorite hook. Also, let me know your favorite hook below. I wanna sort of hear some of the people that, that in, in the followers that I have out there and fans that, what hooks do you throw? And what's your favorite hook to throw? Thank you guys so much for following along. We'll see y'all next time.